All right, what's up guys? Real simple video going over a product just for my Digital One students, and that's Type It. In class, I showed some examples on Schoology that looked like this, and again, some things that we noted that were going really well for these designs is that one, less is more. They were all very, very simple. I'm talking like really simple color choices, maybe one or two colors, maybe three. Um, everything is very centered and kind of perfectly in these squares for these designs. Fonts are already good from the get-go, so we can look at a few or a handful of good fonts. And if you look, they rarely change more than two letters. Um, in some cases, the entire word, but it's usually a very, very simple edit to the font and nothing too over the top, not changing every single letter. So let's dive in. I want to go over some basics of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, right away, uh, because I'm a Digital One student, we haven't had enough time to talk about fonts or typography yet. I recommend picking one of these uh, handful of fonts. Avenir Next has a lot of like really awesome uh, different weights and styles. I like the ultralight a lot. Dido, I think that's how you pronounce it. Dido, it's how we've pronounced it for years. Really good uh, serif font if you're thinking like Times New Roman. Helvetica, uh, just in general, is a solid font. Helvetica Bold is a very popular, very uh, if not the most popular font. Rockwell gives a little bit of flavor with some slab serif. Futura is just one of my favorite fonts. The bold one is used in a lot of logos. And then last but not least, Trajan, big uh, popular movie poster font. So let's dive in. For the product, I said we were making it six inches by six inches, keeping the raster effects the resolution high at 300 pixels per inch and here we go right away grabbing the text tool i don't want you to ever click and drag a text box because you create these weird constraints that you need to move around so i'm going to go ahead and command z to undo that when you grab the text tool if you just tap once into space now you've got free text which you can edit um, the way you want so let's go ahead and type out a word i'll say moon once I have that word, I like to tap the escape key on the keyboard. It's the same thing as going and clicking the, uh, the black arrow tool. And I'll hold shift while I scale it up, always holding shift on the keyboard. Um, I'll go ahead and note that I am currently, my workspace is Essentials Classic. That just puts a few extra tools on the screen. But right here on the right side, I can go ahead and uh, find the font. Font that I'll be using today, let's say, let's use some Futura. So I'll type in Futura and I can play around, see the different weights. I'll stick with the bold. Now, right now it's uh, what is called live text. What live text means is that I can change the font out. I can uh, change what it says. I can grab my type tool again, you know, highlight it, change it, delete it, etc. cetera. Um, but what I'm gonna do is this little button down here called create outlines. You can also find it by right clicking and clicking create outlines. What that just did is it converted the live text into shapes. What that means is Adobe Illustrator no longer sees this as text. I can't change its font. I can't change what it says. But it gives me a few more options of what I can do to play around with it. So let's think of ways to uh, change the O's and moon to look like the moon. Now that it's a shape, if I grab my direct selection tool, the white arrow tool up here, A on the keyboard, I can click on individual anchor points. If you tap once and then click and drag the anchor points, you can move them around and warp them. You can also, if I tap once and then click the delete key on the keyboard, you can start deleting anchor points and potentially even delete an entire path. So now I've got this kind of like half moon look going on in the middle of that moon. So that's one way, using the direct selection tool. Again, the white arrow tool. Another way of playing is just to simply delete objects. If you uh, click on your text, you are able to ungroup the letters and then you can move them around on your own. Rather than completely deleting that one, what I'll do is I'll stack some objects on top of it. If I grab my ellipse tool, hold shift, I've got a perfect circle. And if I hold alt or the option key on my keyboard, I can drag it, now I've got two circles. What I'll do is I will uh, make one, or the one on top white, sorry, the one on the bottom white. And now I can stack it and take a look at that. I've got a crescent moon all up in there. There we go. So if I select it all and click group, now it's all one piece to center things because I want this to be in the center of my composition, right? If it's all in one group, what I can do is my align tools over here. If I'm aligning to the artboard, which is the white space, I can horizontal align in the center and then vertical align in the center and boom, now I know that that's right in the middle there. A few more things. If I want to change the color, so I want to change the background color. In Illustrator, the best way to change the background color is simply to create a rectangle the exact same size as the background whoops there we go change its color i'll go ahead and change it to maybe like a deep blue and maybe i can double click on this and make it even more blue blue add some green to that and then over here in a range send it back 
but now it's dark text and a dark color, right? Black text and a blue doesn't really work, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch some things out. I can go ahead and ungroup that by clicking over here, ungroup. I'll use the eyedropper tool on my keyboard. Um, I on the keyboard or the eyedropper tool right over here to change the white circle to the color of the background. And then I'll probably switch, if I hold shift and click on these objects, I can probably change these to white. And boom, there's one done. Real quick, I'll show one more. I'll show the shadow one because it involves a few other simple effects, right? Um, if I make a new document really quickly, same uh, dimensions, all that. Let's go ahead and create my background from the get-go. There's a square. Change that color to pale yellow. Drop its stroke. Let's go ahead and grab my text tool and type out the word shadow. I think for this, a big, bold font. Again, I'm going to right-click, create outlines. Let's go ahead and give it a color that I'll be able to see. Let's go ahead and center it. Scoot it up a little bit because I'm going to create a copy. Hold Alt on my keyboard, drag. Here's a cool trick. If you right-click, transform, you have a handful of different options in here, one of which is reflect. Let's you choose which axis you're going to reflect it on. Horizontal axis would make a lot of sense. So there I go. Let's go ahead and change this to a much darker blue. Let's drop its opacity so it kind of looks like a shadow that uh, isn't completely dark. To skew it, it's a few different ways to do that. I'm going to do Effect, Distort, Transform, Free Distort. I recommend playing around with these, see what you can get with all these options in Distort and Transform. But in Free Distort, I can just click on these little anchors and shift them over. Two. And there I go. I got a nice shadow. So after that, all it is is uh, exporting. I can go back to my first one, file, export, as in a class, we're setting our options to PNG. Always name the files, your last name, your last name, and then what it is. Check use artboards just in case you got anything floating off the edge there, and hit export, and you're done. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps students complete the project.